All right. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Jack. Um, I'm with a little local uh, dev studio here called Hexbit Studios. Um, we're currently working on our first project, um, and we're doing it in Unity uh, using a lot of their 2D uh, tools that they have. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of work um, on getting to know how their tile maps work. And so uh, they were looking for talks, um, and I was like, hey, I'm available, so uh, here I am. Um, so is anybody, is everybody here kind of familiar with Unity? Anybody using Unity? Okay. Uh, anybody use the 2D tools at all? Or are you mostly doing like 3D stuff? 3D, 3D? okay. Uh, so, um, there's actually some cool things with the tile maps. Um, if you are using, um, if you are doing things in 3D, there's actually some cool things you can do with the tile maps in the 3D space. Um, we won't get into that tonight, it's a little advanced, but, um, but yeah, like, it, even though it's made for the 2D side of things, uh, you can still apply some of this stuff to, uh, 3D. Um, it's kind of cool because you can basically take a tile map and flip it on its axis, and so then you're laying things out. Um, like along the, is it Z? I'm mostly working in 2D, so along the Z is like into the screen. So you can actually flip it down and then you can create um, uh, tiles that are based out of like prefabs and things like that, so it's pretty cool. So um, hopefully you'll be able to take something away from this talk and kind of um, apply it to your own projects. Um, so hopefully it's at least somewhat useful. Um, we won't get too deep into the uh, scriptable tiles and brushes. Um, there's a lot of advanced things you can do with those, um, but we will touch on some examples of those. Um, first of all, though, um, I'm going to kind of just walk you through um, the tile map system that Unity has. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the very first thing to create a tile map, you need to create a tile map. So you'll go here and you'll right click and you'll go to 2D object and tile map. And so this creates a tile map for us. Um, the parent object is a grid, and so this is kind of the, um, the game object that kind of just runs um, all the logic for setting up the tile map. Uh, we can zoom in here a little bit. Um, and then the actual tile map itself is a child of that grid, and we can you can think of a tile map as a layer in Photoshop. So you can have any number of tile maps that you want. Um, so you can have a tile map for all your game objects um, that are in the world. You can have a tile map for all your walls, all your floors, that sort of thing. Um, and so you can just name this whatever we want to call it. Uh, we'll just call it um, Fun Map, because I'm super creative. Um, So yeah, so that's all it takes to actually create the tile map itself um, to get it into um, the system. And so then you also have access to this tile palette window. Or, oops, that's not what I meant to hit. Right over here. Uh, this tile palette is essentially just like a palette you see in Photoshop. It's going to be your drawing tools um, for working with the tile map. So we have a, a selection tool to select um, your actual tiles that you have drawn on here. Uh, you have a move tool, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the paintbrush is for painting. You can paint um, an actual area, like an actual area that you have. Um, this is a picker tool, so you can like actually pick tiles that you have out here um, if you don't want to like find them in here. Um, then obviously you have a race, and then a bucket fill tool. Um, another thing is that you can use, if you have the paintbrush um, or the box select, or the box paint uh, selected, um, you can actually hold shift while you uh, use it, and that will erase for you. Uh, so it's just a little quick thing, so you're not constantly switching back and forth between the paintbrush and the eraser. Um, it took me forever to get into that um, mode of working, so um, I was constantly just like, okay, I'm painting, and now I'm erasing, and now I'm painting, so um, huge time saver um, to know that you can just hit shift and you can erase. Um, so once we have that, we actually need to get some tiles that we can actually put into uh, the scene. So uh, I have here just a spreadsheet um, of some stuff. Let's see if I can open it. Yeah, so um, if
if any of you are familiar with a bunch of like 2D prototype art, uh, this is from a uh, really well-known guy named Kenny. Um, he uh, makes a lot of free assets. He does 2D and he does 3D. Um, it's just, it's very prototype looking, but um, it's very clean and solid and just works really well. So shout out to him for providing these tiles that I'm using right now. Um, so yeah, so we have this uh, sprite sheet here. Um, I've gone ahead and actually set up all of the settings that we have for it, um, but I'll run through those pretty quickly um, just to kind of show you what to look out for. Um, first of all, whenever you uh, bring in a sprite into your project and you have it here in your assets um, directory, um, you, when you first select it, it's going to be, the sprite mode will be uh, set to single and it's gonna treat the whole sprite sheet as just one solid uh, texture and that's not what we want. We have like a bunch of sprites that we've chopped up here. Um, so you wanna make sure you select multiple. And then pixels per unit is essentially just the number of pixels you want to base, um, like it's the, it's the ratio of pixels um, of your asset to the units in uh, Unity. So a unit is essentially like one of these squares here. Um, and so since these tiles are 128 and I want it to be one to one, I make sure that my pixels per unit is the same. Um, and then you can go into the sprite editor and uh, normally when you first do this, it will just seem like one giant thing and you actually have to slice it. I normally never trust the automatic because it just never really works. Um, so I always try and make sure that my, stri my sprites are consistent and um, have, um, have their dimensions already kind of laid out for me. Um, so then I'll go here and I'll select a grid uh, by cell size and you can enter in how you want this to be. Um, and then you'll just hit slice. This is using a different one so I'd have to make sure that I um, make this the right, uh, the right amount, so it's the 128 uh, by 128. Then you hit slice and it's all good, but I'm not gonna do that because we already have it, I don't need to apply it, so. Um, the other big thing, this doesn't really apply to this because if you look at this asset that we have, it's, it's more of like an SVG, it's not really like um, straight pixel art. Um, so you don't really have to worry about this next bit for this texture, um, but if you are using pixel art uh, for this filter mode here, filter mo mode here, um, where it says trilinear, um, that is normally set to bilinear. Um, for pixel art, you're gonna wanna set that to point. Uh, we don't want any filtering done um, on our on our actual asset, we don't want to have any of that bleeding effect. Um, we want our uh, stuff to look really nice and crisp and clear. Um, but with these assets, it makes more sense to actually have like a trilinear, bilinear. Um, another thing that I like to do, um, this is just kind of a force of habit, it's not really super necessary, but normally this is unchecked and you just use like whatever the default is. I usually check this and override the compression format to 32-bit. Uh, that usually, I've just found that my colors look a lot better um, and that usually really matters in your um, pixel art more than um, if you're using like an SVG or something like that. Um, so we'll just revert that, to keep it all the same. Um, so yeah, so we bring this in and if we want to create actual tiles for this, um, we can come over here, we have a tile palette uh, drop down. So you can see I've already made a couple palettes um, so this is the palette that we're gonna create. Um, so to do that, we just need to create a new palette and give it a name. We'll just call this uh, sample palette RPG, because these are RPG tiles. Um, and you can normally just leave the grid and cell size stuff alone. Um, it's normally if you have some like cr pretty wonky shapes, like if you don't really use like actual squares um, for your individual tiles, um, that's where you'll affect that. But by default, it's set up for making a bunch of squares. So we'll create that. Um, it's going to ask you where you want to save it. Um, I have a tile palette thing here, so I'm gonna select that folder. 
and we, it's automatically selected it from our dropdown. We don't have anything here, and it tells us you can drag a tile, sprite, or sprite texture assets here. Um, so what we want to do is we've set up this sprite already uh, to be our tiles. So you just click and drag and bring it over. And it's going to open up another window for you to save those tiles. So we want to go into this tiles folder, and we're going to create a new folder to hold these. Sample tiles. Tiles, there we go. And we're gonna select that folder. And what this is doing is it's taking every individual um, sprite that we have on this sprite sheet. And so you can see that we have 260 of them. It's going through every single one of those and creating an actual tile asset. Um, so a tile asset is just a really simple game object that um, just holds information about our tile. So we can go in here, it's gone through every single one, and it's basically like, okay, here's the tile, uh, the sprite that is assigned to this, the color of that, and the collider type we have. Um, you can do none if there's no collision that you wanna have handled by the physics system, or if you wanna set it up customly yourself, you can do grid. I usually just leave it a sprite, because um, I'm not doing anything too, too fancy. Um, so it's gone through every single one of those and it's generated um, these sprites, or these tiles. And so this is actually what we see here. Um, so then, now that we have a palette, we can just start um, painting. So you'll notice here, uh, we have an active tile map. Right now there's only one selection there, but if we were to create another tile map, let's go ahead and create one now you would see that we could select that. So you, whenever you paint or erase or anything, you're gonna be working on your active tile map. Um, this is probably the one thing that is kind of a frustration of this tool is that I'll constantly remember like, oh yeah, I'm on the wrong tile map and I've worked for like an hour on it and it's like, oh, I, I was working on the wrong tile map, that's cool. So um, usually I will, I don't know, I usually just go drink a beer because it's annoying. So. Um, it's one thing to watch out for though. So um, let's get back on our fun map. And we've got this tile selected. And so then we have to go select this. So you can just paint across. And it's really easy. So like when they first show this functionality, it's like, yeah, this is really, really cool. And it's super useful. Um, it's just easy to do but you know, quickly you realize it's really annoying to just like, that took a really long time just to do that. Um, and so they have this concept of scriptable brushes and scriptable tiles. Um, so to get into that, um, we'll actually first uh, look at a scriptable brush. Um, so scriptable brushes and scriptable tiles are very similar. Um, the main thing that you have to remember uh, between the two, um, so the scriptable brush is going to be just a scriptable object um, that is inheriting from a grid brush base class. Um, and so it inherits everything, all of its members from that class, and that base class is just inheriting from scriptable objects. So at the nitty gritty of all of it, it's just scriptable objects all the way down. Um, and so, and then the tiles, scriptable tiles are just inheriting from a tile based class, I believe it's called. Um, and so they have their own different set of methods. Um, so that's the like number one thing is like you have to remember which class that you want to, like based on whether you're making a scriptable tile or a scriptable brush, which class you need to um, inherit from um, or extend. And then the other big thing to remember is that a tile, uh, a scriptable tile will redraw itself whenever the tile map gets refreshed. And so that generally happens on like a re-render or um, when you're actually um, placing your tiles. Uh, like a, a tile will get placed and then it will look at all the data of the tiles around it to see which tile it should be. That's generally how the scriptable tiles work. Um, the scriptable brushes, um, they don't update on a refresh of the tile map. They only update um, when you actually do some sort of brush action, like painting or erasing or something like that. 
Uh, so that's one of the key things to keep in mind. Um, so if we want to look at, let's see, I've got some example code here. We've got, I've got this line brush and this road, road, road tile. Um, so first we're gonna look at the line brush. Um, so again, we're uh, basing this off of a grid brush. We get some fancy functions like paint, uh, and that's usually the big thing you're gonna have here. You can override the, the paint. There's also a method called erase. Um, you also have access to the box fill. Um, pretty much every single, every single um, tool you have at your disposal here in this little toolbar, uh, you can override the functionality of that um, with your brushes. Uh, so the default brush just uses um, the, the normal functionality of these that have already been coded in. Um, but you could do things where like with a scriptable brush, you can do things like when I erase, I'm actually wanting to place like a different tile. So it's almost like you have like a foreground and a background tile that you, like whenever you're erasing, you're placing the secondary tile. Whenever you're painting, you're placing this primary tile. Um, so if we get back to our code, essentially we're just overriding this paint uh, method and so we have a line start active. So this brush, just to say, like it's a line brush, which basically means we're just creating a brush that will allow us to easily um, draw lines of tiles. Um, and so we're overriding the paint because that's what we're doing with this. Um, it has a line start active field and a line start position. So essentially we just go through here and if we, this is essentially checking to see like if we've actually clicked a position on the grid, um, on the tile map. If we have, then it gets that position. Um, it gets that start position and then it starts using the in position as wherever your mouse position is on the tile map. And we'll, I'll, this is kind of hard to explain with just the code. It's way easier to see visually, um, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so essentially it, it gets your start position from wherever you click, and then it's going to set your in position to the position of your mouse um, based on the location it, it's at on the tile map. Um, and so what we do from there is when you click again, it's going to then be like, okay, I now have a new position. I'm going to set that position um, as the end point, and then it essentially just takes those two points and um, figures out, let's see, it gets all the points on the line just using this little algorithm you can find if, um, if you want to follow this link. Um, but essentially, it's just going through here like, and calculating like each cell that needs to be um, filled in based on the start and end position that you've uh, set up. So this is just the algorithm, algorithm that's used for just determining that. It's just to kind of show that you can do logic in your brush, like your brush can have any number of like uh, routines that it runs through um, whenever you're uh, actually painting. Um, but the actual like logic of this is a little outside the scope of the talk. So um, let's see it in action and we'll get back to this. Um, so if we go in here and we want to create a new palette or yeah, let's see, no, we're working with the brushes. So. All our brushes that we have, so these are some other brushes that I have here. Um, we've, we've got our uh, script, so our example line brush, and then we actually have this brushes folder, and I've got, already gone and done this, but essentially you'll do um, right click and create, and we'll see this line brush here, and we just wanna create that as a new brush. Save, and we see that it's there. And then if I go over here, should see it come up as a line brush, I believe. Yeah, test line brush. So where it's getting those values is actually through this create brush functionality. So this is just an editor method, essentially. So um, that's one of the, the big, um, the big drawbacks, I think, anyway, of uh, scriptable brushes is that 
you have to do, and this also falls with tiles as well, um, you have to learn how to code um, extensions like for the editor itself. So you're extending methods for the actual Unity editor uh, to um, update its GUI so that you can actually use the things that you're creating. Um, so this here is why I was able to right click and um, go create and then go line brush. So this is the magic here that just handles that for us. Um, and then since it's above this method, when we click on that, it's going to run whatever this method is. And so this is essentially just like open up a save file panel and um, here are my defaults that I want you to have. That's why it said like new line brush um, in the, um, as the default name. Um, so yeah, so then we just create those assets. Um, like I said, at the, at the bottom of all this, they're just scriptable objects. Um, scriptable objects just get saved as assets in your, um, in your actual project. So, um, so yeah, so that's really how all that's working. Um, so we have this line brush. So I've selected it, I'm no longer on that. We have some methods here. So since those uh, variables were public, we see them down here. So we have this like line start active. This lets me know if I've actually clicked yet. Tells me more my line start is. Um, and so we can actually go on here. I can select, let's get some water. So I can start here. And so you'll notice like it's actually, as I'm moving the mouse, it's just giving me a detail of like, okay, here's what it's going to look like. Um, and so then when I click again, it actually paints all those. So then I can click again, and I'm creating lines. So this is functionality that's not just inherently in Unity. Um, this is functionality that's been coded with this, um, with this class. Um, this is also available um, from the actual Unity team. They have um, an extra, like a, a 2D extras repository that has a lot of really useful brushes um, that we'll go over toward the end. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple, like in terms of the actual logic behind it all, um, because you're you're just you're just getting the the point that you're clicking on. Like you're just using the functionality that's already built into uh, the paint method, and you're just overriding that to say like, okay, yeah, place that here, but also do these other things. Um, so normally it would just be like, okay, this is where I clicked, and this is where I'm placing the tile. And essentially, we're just overriding that functionality to say, like, yeah, you're still doing that, but we're also, like, I want you to remember where you're at, and, you know, like, I'm not finished with those positions yet, so I want to actually know um, where I click next, and then you're going to do something for me uh, based on that. Um, so, yeah. So, those are scriptable brushes. Um, there's a lot more you can do with them, um, but... It gets a little hairy and a little advanced, um, but we will uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that toward the end. Um, so let's get into an actual um, scriptable tile. So for scriptable tiles, um, the example that I have here is um, a road tile. So for the road tile, it's essentially um, trying to have, like if we have these, um, it's just easier if I can show you real quick. Hang on one second. Let's see. Let's go to the default brush. We're just using. So we have this road palette. We've created a new palette. Um, I want to use this road tile. Just show it in advance. Okay. So what this is going to do is. This, is, this isn't a brush, this is a tile. So it's basing what, um, what tile to place based on all of its neighbors. So right now I've just got a line, but if I come up here, it knows to like, okay, I need to have a corner here and we're gonna go straight now. And then I can just do this and I can just quickly and easily put down a path. Like if you noticed, if I needed to do this like just by placing each thing, like there's so many places where you have to swap out your tiles like in your palette to just have one tile that just has the rules of 
Um, and the reason you don't see anything here is because I don't think I set the actual like preview image, so there's nothing there, so it's kind of jarring, but um, it's definitely there, obviously. So, um, but the fact that these can just update themselves, like if you're going through and you're like, okay, so we have this path here, we have this path here, but now I want to have like a shortcut in between. Like I now have to update this top tile and this bottom tile and it seems like, oh, that's not really that bad, but if you have like entire levels worth of like updates that need to be made, um, the other big thing for this is like it allows people who aren't really like program savvy to have these tools available. Um, you know, the programmers will write the tools and your designers can actually just use these tools to just quickly um, write out all these different levels. So for, just for example, like for the game that we're working on, um, I'm working on writing a bunch of world building tools that use a lot of this uh, technology so that um, the guy that I have working on a lot of the AI um, who is working on building all these agents, he needs levels that he can build, um, test his agents out in. And so I'm essentially creating something for him to just easily map out a level without having to spend a ton of time. And so he can then throw his agents in and they can just run around and do whatever and he can actually train them, um, which that's way beyond my ability. Um, that's why he's on my team because I don't know how to do any of that. So, um, but yeah, so the big thing here is um, the fact that because this isn't a brush, it's a, it's a scriptable tile, it's using all the tile data around it. So it, um, you can, the a scriptable tile can get um, the data of all of its neighbors um, that are near it on a tile map. And that's why it's able to say like, okay, like I, I now have a tile, a row tile here, so now this needs to change based on the rules that I have set up. So essentially for this, um, this code gets really hairy really fast. Um, and the main reason is for that is this guy here. So we're doing a lot of this thing called masking. So the, the rough part here is that we're going through, um, we're calling this get tile data. So this is, this, is the, this is the method that you'll use a lot when you're um, making your own scriptable tiles. So get tile data is what gives you all of the tile data um, for the tile that you're currently wanting to paint and like all of its neighbors. And so it's taking the location, the tile map, um, and then a reference to the actual tile data and choosing that to um, come up with its, um, it, it's what you have available to have your logic. So essentially we have to create a mask. This mask um, just calls this has row tile method. Has row tile just takes a tile map and the position uh, of the tile currently, and it just basically, it's basically saying like, hey, is this a road tile that I'm on right now? Um, if not, then it returns false, if so, then yeah. Um, so it essentially goes and it takes the tile map and the location to figure that out. So it's like, okay, so my current location, is there anything above me? So that's what this is doing here. Um, is there anything to my left? Right? No. Is there anything to my right? Sorry. Is there anything below me? Is there anything to my left? And based on those, it builds up a mask. You'll notice that this is just adding the result over and over and over again. So at the end of all this, you have 8421. Um, if there's something at each one of those positions, um, it's going to return 15. Um, if there's something only above you, it's gonna return one because it'll return zero for the other things. Um, so it takes that and it essentially gets the index based on that mask value that we've calculated. And so th what that is doing is it's going, it's just a bit, another big switch statement that is taking in that mask value and based on that, it's returning an index to use for our tiles. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. If we look at the actual uh, road tile itself, we have a list of sprites, and like 
this is why for zero, we don't have anything showing up um, because it, it doesn't have any neighbors at all. Like it really should be something, but um, I just elected to just have it be blank. Um, but you could have this be anything, but essentially these are the actual tile objects that you want, or the sprite objects that you want for each one of these tiles. Um, and so it's essentially figuring out which of these index, indexi, indices, sorry, which of these indices do I need to use to place this tile? And so if we go back over here, um, essentially based on these mask values, it figures out which, um, which index to use. So the reason this is really hairy is the fact that um, it becomes like really tied to your actual game asset that you have. Um, like if I, the, the asset that I've based this off of is just this like really simple little sprite map here. So we have like a straight, we have a curve, we have a, a T and a cross. Um, and if we look at the code, it does all that. It also gets the rotation based on the mask, based on the neighbors that you have, so it figures out which way you need to go. If you, like this is completely optional, you don't have to necessarily do this, you could just have a way bigger switch statement um, and a way, a way bigger um, uh, mask calculation to figure out exactly which one of these indices that we need. Um, and so, it, it's kind of a trade-off. It's either do you have a little bit more complicated code or do you have like a smaller sprite sheet? Generally, people want to have a smaller sprite sheet for, uh, for the end of it. Um, but the main problem that we have here is that if I swap like these two positions and I don't, so let's just do that real quick. So if I swap this guy, let's put him over here real quick. Let's put this guy over here. And let's put him right here. And if I save that, since this is a reference to my actual um, project, I this is one really nice thing about Unity is like since I'm editing this directly, um, it gets those changes right away. Like once it recompiles, so now my roads are all messed up, and they're going to be forever messed up until I either. Um, fix all of these and say like, okay, this is actually supposed to be this tile and this is actually supposed to be the different tile by clicking here and like figuring that out or going back and fixing up my asset. So this becomes really brittle um, because we're just relying on this like mask technique. Um, and so like it's, it's pretty interesting and it works, um, but it's really easy to break. So if your artist just changes their asset um, now, like all of your roads are broken um, just because they wanted to update their asset, which artists tend to do that. They want to update their stuff to make it look prettier um, or like more compact or something like that. So, um, so that kind of leads into um, the fact that, so the Unity team, there's a 2D team that actually um, has made a bunch of really helpful um, brushes themselves, and you can actually find that. Oh, I meant to have the link up, I don't have it, so let's go find it. So we're in Git, uh. so we're in GitHub. Let's see, it's not this one, but this will get me close to it. Two D extras. So there's a bunch of um, brushes that they've already actually made and they're constantly updating this. Like you can see the last update was 10 days ago um, where all the like real stuff is. Like obviously this stuff doesn't get updated that much. <laughs> um, so, and they keep it up to date. Like right now they've got it working for 2019, the latest version of Unity. Um, I've been using 2018 through this talk. Um, so they keep it up to date and they're usually adding some new uh, brushes every once in a while. Um, and so there's some really good stuff in here. So essentially the way you use this, it's really, really easy. I, for the longest time it took me forever to figure out exactly how to use these. Um, so essentially you'll just download uh, this, um, this repo like just as a zip file um, or you can clone it into your own environment. Um, and you'll come in here, you'll find this tile map folder 
and you'll just drag it into your assets folder and we can see that I've got, the, you'll see this tile map here. Uh, that is just the, the, that actual folder from their repo. So they have brushes, they have tiles, they have this grid information. I don't even know what the grid information is for. I haven't really gotten that far into it. Um, so they have a bunch of brushes that they've already made. Like you'll see here, they've got a line brush. They have a prefab brush. Um, prefab brush is really cool because you can actually just assign an actual prefab, prefab um, which is, is really cool because like this is where things can come into play for like the 3D elements. Um, you can just use a prefab brush to um, lay out um, a level on a flat plane. Um, like so if you're doing, uh, if you want to have like a tile based game in 3D, um, this is one way that you can do that. You can create your own 3D tiles that are just prefabs and then use the prefab brush to paint on that plane. Um, so instead of having this axis here, you can actually invert the axis. Um, I believe it's in the grid. Yeah, the cell, the cell swizzle, I think it is. So if you change this, I'm not gonna change it because I'm afraid it's gonna start ruining things, but also I'm in like a 2D project, but this I want to see if I can make it look cool yeah so so we have this like it's now like inverted everything but now we have this like really crazy uh, plane to paint on um, I think I still have to like set something up correctly but anyway so we'll go back to this um, I believe oh yeah so you can the the actual like swizzle of the cells is handled in the grid, the tile map itself has an orientation and that's where you um, basically uh, select the axis that you want to orient the, um, the tile map on. Um, so yeah, so that's where the prefab brush comes into play. So you can use this in 2D, um, it comes into play a lot in 3D when people wanna make tile based games in 3D. Um, uh, random brush is really, Simple um, random brush will just take a um, an index or a a list of sprites that you have, and it just picks one randomly, obviously, to place. So it it allows you to have like multiple different types of grass tile that uh, grass tiles that go together. Um, but to kind of break up the monotony of a level, you can just use this random brush to kind of just paint on uh, different things. Um, they also have, let's see, the big one that I really wanted to show are the, they have a bunch of different tiles. Um, there's the rule tile, which is really cool. Um, the rule tile, let's take a look at it. Can actually do, ah, I know what I need to do. They put all of, so when you bring this in, you'll then have these entries here because their scripts just add these as um, menu options uh, for the create menu. So these are all the tiles uh, from Unity. These are all the brushes from Unity uh, that they have. I think I have um, some other things that are causing some of these not to show up, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so the, what was the one? The rule tile, we create this rule tile and we can say, oh, just say rule test. Yeah. Uh, what we can do with this is we have, let's see, I want to, yeah, here we go. We create a list of rules. So this has just a bunch of different rules that it has that you set up for how it handles all the tiling. See if we can zoom in on that, there we go. Um, so the way this works is you'll set your actual tile that you want to have in, the, in this section here. And then the type of collider that you're using, the type of output, um, we can actually look at what those are. Um, so you have like single random animation, so if you want, um, like this essentially kind of ties in with like the random, um, it has some of the same logic that the random brush has. Um, the animation is just a way that you can have actual animated tiles as a part of these rule tiles. So animated tiles are usually used for things like waterfalls, that sort of thing. Um, generally, 
I'm normally just doing like kind of static levels, so I'm usually just using single. Um, what's really cool here though is that this little uh, three by three grid over here, um, this guy, this is where you actually set your rules that you want to have. So you can just click in here. So this is a base, this is essentially saying like, okay, if I have a tile um, above me to like in every single direction uh, of like the four directions, uh, so like above to the left and right and below me, then do this. If I specific, if you click again, you'll get an X. So basically this says like, if I have something to the left, to the right, and not below me and not above me, then use this tile. So essentially you just click out like the rules that you wanna have um, for each one of these. And so it essentially, like this allows you to essentially recreate this, um, this road tile with an actual GUI um, so that you're not sitting there like setting up a mask for anything. It's just handling all that for you in code. Um, the code is a little bit more complex, and so that's why they wrote it for us, so that we don't have to do it ourselves. Um, so yeah, the, the other big one that I use a lot, and this is used for um, usually top-down games. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, is this terrain tile that they have. So the terrain tile, if we go ahead and create that, Tiles, terrain tile. This actually is kind of similar to the rule tile, but it's actually saying like, okay, this is if your tile is filled, like um, it's it has something on every side, like it's a wall essentially. This is like if you have something on three sides of the tile, if you have two sides and one corner, like you actually sh have these specific tiles that you set in here um, and so you're not really messing around with like all these like rules that you can accidentally change or get wrong. It's, it's actually like, it's almost like the rules are tied to the GUI itself and it pretty much covers every single one of those and you don't even have to use all of them. Um, and so here you just assign um, a sprite directly here and then you'll bring this tile over to the palette. Let's see if I can actually this is gonna look really wonky, but we'll see what happens. I just wanna show that you can click here and just start drawing with it. So obviously I don't have all the rules set up, but it, it's basing um, what to show based on these that I have already. And so it's like, oh, okay, so this has three sides, so it's going to actually, you know, show that one or whatever. So um, this is used a lot. I use this almost in every project is the terrain tile. It's like the first um, tile that I bring in. It's really versatile, it's really powerful. Um, and the other big one I use is uh, the, rule, the rule tiles. Um, the rule tiles are really good. Um, I have some trouble with a uh, top-down game with them just because sometimes the rules are a little bit limited in what you can do. Um, but they do work for platformers really well, so if you're making a platformer, I really recommend using the rule tile. Um, and yeah, so are there any questions that anybody has? So, so is this only, like, when you have all these rules, mm -hmm. based on the current tile that you're implementing, not on the other, like, the three tiles? But right, right, so it's, um, it's only basing it off of uh, the actual tiles that are assigned to um, those actual rules. So essentially, um, even though we're all on the same map, it's not, like these road tiles aren't basing their, um, let's see, they're not basing their logic on these like these blue water tiles because these were tiles that were placed um, essentially using a different rule set. And so um, it doesn't see this like water tile here as a road tile. It only sees the actual ones that were in those. Um, if I can actually show you here. If we go to this, it only um, bases it off of these here. So it's like, it can know that like, oh, these aren't the, the right tiles. Uh, so I don't need to, I can, this is empty. 
to it, um, whereas these are all filled for it. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so um, the the main thing is that, so first of all, Unity 2D is just like a subset of Unity 3D, uh, so it's just all built into the same engine. Um, but like when you're working on your project like in kind of the 2D context, um, and you're, use, you're building it out, um, like you're using things like tile maps and things like that, um, using the tools that they actually provide, um, you do get performance gain because it's made specifically for that. Like, if you go back, uh, oh, when was it? I think it was like Unity, yeah, Unity five days, like basically before they started uh, going by years, um, they, the way that you did 2D was, it was a 3D game, but you had, uh, how were we doing it back then? Um, you basically either had to bite the bullet and buy an asset off of the asset store that did all the heavy lifting for you, and even then it was like, this is okay, but why did I pay like 70 bucks for this? Um, or you had to, um, like everything was just a plane, like a 3D plane with a texture on it, yeah. Um, or you could do like a, like a really flat cube. I saw some people do that, and they could do some interesting things with that, because you could like scale it out, and then you could still use like a projection camera so that you could see that happening, and I was just like, okay, now we're kind of getting out of the realm of 2D, but anyway. Um, so, but yeah, so you would have to actually like create like all your own tools that essentially did all this stuff, but you were kind of having to write all of this logic for even just painting stuff on there yourself because you're essentially just placing all of these like, um, they're still polygons, like it's, it's, it's a plane, but it's still a 3D object. Um, and so we didn't have this like true blue 2D um, performance. So yeah, definitely um, now and then, it's like huge increase in productivity. Um, so. And then I've also played around with um, Unreal Engine with their 2D stuff. They have this like, um, I think they call it like, um, I wanna say they call it like Paper 2D. And it feels like they're kind of slowly abandoning it, like they're not really doing a whole lot with it. Um, like all the documentation I could really find on it was like just really old and outdated. And um, so that's not, that's not like a knock on um, Unreal, but I just don't make 3D games because I like to think two dimensionally. Um, but yeah, so also I'm not really much of an artist and it's a little easier for me to make that art. So, um, if there's any 2D artists out there, I could definitely talk to you. So, uh, but yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so these tile maps are game objects. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually have, uh, so like your normal objects have sorting layers, your t since it's just another game object, it has a sorting layer as well. So we can go over here and we, the tile map renderer, which is in charge of doing all the rendering of the actual tiles, it just has a sorting layer. So right now everything's on the default layer, but you can mess around with that and put things on different layers and just have all your sorting uh, done through that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, well, uh, thank you so much for having me, and I'm gonna hand it back over to James. <laughs>